today in the media conference with Lal Goyal, which is brought to you by V4 News, Global TV, V4 Stream, Malnadu TV India, News Gaon Se, Samvas Sarokar News, Organ Donation India Foundation and Gyan. Our end is to enlighten you with the current topic. And today's topic is not only current, but it is very burning topic. And that is the parental pressure and education. Parenting or child rearing promotes and supports the physical, emotional, social, and intellectual development of a child from infancy to adulthood. Parenting refers to the intricacies of raising a child and not exclusively for a biological relationship. The most common caretaker in parenting is the father or mother or both the child's biological parents. Parents want the best for their children. They often dream of their children attending the best of universities and then securing a most respectable job in modern society. They work and earn so they can care for their child. While a secure and happy family environment is considered a bare necessity for healthy growth and development, there is a fine line between caring and caring too much. Parental pressure has led to the most horrible scenarios. Modern society is a very competitive place. Honesty and humbleness are shown with sarcasm. Good deeds are questioned and bad deeds regularly ignored. Power and money have become prime needs for survival. Unemployment rates are running high. Adding to the pressure on students considered the future are those parents whom place mountains of responsibility on their children. One can only imagine what the child goes through. Many parents want their children to be the star of the class, the top of the school. This is not wrong in what we must aim high to reach our utmost potential. But there is, however, a saying that a chicken can run, canadal play and eat. It can enjoy the time it lives when it tries to fly through, it will only disappoint itself. When students are burdened with such high expectations, good intentions go astray. Children are expected to score high in order to make their parents proud. But what happens when they are crushed by overly high expectations and are unable to achieve? In this new era, a parent can keep track of their child's academic results assignments, level, and reports. Some parents are best over, over these scores so much that the need for their child to achieve the top score overtakes all else. Parental pressure leads to stress and anxiety. The child always has their nose in books, is stressed and faces anxiety and fears failing. There is a fine line between being a good parent capable of stimulating kids to be achievers and taking things too far. A study shows that crossing the line can have severe consequences for young individuals. Singapore's educational system is known for its quality and the fact that students acquire tons of knowledge and a high level of competence. In 2016, Singapore ranked first in science and math among all countries participating in an organization of economic cooperation and development survey. Students are high and parents also tend to be quite demanding when it comes to good grades and academic excellence. Parents have high expectations to the point of giving their children performance anxiety in school. This is one of the reasons why reports suggest Singaporean kids as young as eight could be contemplating suicide. Mental health experts believe that unrealistic parental expectations could affect the cognitive and emotional development of children. Singapore psychiatrist 
psychologists and child counseling experts are not alone in this belief. New study shows just how deter detrimental the parental push for high grades could be. Sleep deprivation, eating disorders, excessive worrying, cheating, burnout, loss of interest in hobbies and withdrawal from friends and family can be among the consequences of excess pressure. Teenage years represent the time when a child goes through mental and physical changes. The need to fit into society will grow along with their desire to be attractive or adequately academic. Parents are the backbones to help them through this time and thus parental pressure may bring forth a breakdown. A school is full of standardized tests and students are regularly asked to complete up the to four or five hours of homework every night. This often causes parents to think they need to monitor their child's progress, preferably by including into their social life and peering over their shoulder while they study. Such high expectations and pressure may also cause the child to suffer blood pressure problems. They may feel increasingly tired and detached. They will not win at everything and they will not always score well. This brings disappointment, leads to low self-esteem and poor self-image. Parents tend to go their children into becoming all-rounders and children often end up as victims rather than success stories. The future of a child is the biggest concern to a parent. Since the educational institution in our country are always on the lookout for the brightest and the best students to maintain their reputation, parents feel compelled to raise the bar too high for their child to match up to the standards. Parents nowadays are too concerned about how the world how would perceive their child, which in turn results in parental pressure. The idea of excellence and success is often generalized by parents based on how others are performing. Apart from academics, children are also bogged down by rising expectations in various areas where they have their own interests like sports, music, arts, etc. Hence, without giving care to the wholesome development of a child parents keep on pushing the boundaries that ultimately leads to stress, disappointment, anxiety, and suicide. In a study conducted on 190 students from grade 11 to 12 from three private schools in Kolkata and three government-aided schools, it was found out that almost two-thirds of the students experienced pressure from their parents to perform better academically. The school education system in India is textbook oriented, where the focus remains on systematic long hours of study every day and road memorization. The elaborate study uh, routines leaves little time for recreation and socialization. On top of that, there is high competition against peers to perform better and outscore. From a school level to high school life to getting admission to territory institution in students experience academic stress every step of their way. Undeniably, the constant academic stress takes a toll on the mental health of the students. In 2018, there were 1.3 lakh suicides in the country, out of which 8% were accounted for students. Parents have a key role to play in reducing the stress among the students. Here is how it can be done. Some suggestions. Parents should instigate positive thinking and good lifestyle habit in students. A healthy lifestyle coupled with good eating and sleeping habits can considerably reduce stress. Be it in academics, sports, or any other area, parents should always embrace a child's imperfections and mistakes. They need to teach their children their failure 
is part of success. If a student is experiencing fear or anxiety, parents should take the time to talk and address the concerns. Parents should always make it a point to focus on the good aspects and positive attributes of the students. In this age, where a decimal point can be a deciding factor in one's life, there is a dire need to address the issues of parenting expectations and academic stress. We must work as a cohesive unit to conduct deeper analysis and wider studies to understand the obstacles and devise specific plans to reduce the burden on the youngsters. And to discuss this very, very important uh, topic, parental pressure and education, we have a very alert, learned, knowledgeable, those who are authority in their field panelists with us. And I would like to invite my first panelist guest, he is Professor Dr. M. Abdul Salam. Professor Dr. M. Abdul Salam is PhD and postdoctorate from UK. Dr. Salam is the former vice chancellor of the prestigious University of Calicut, which is one of the largest and reputed university in India. As a renowned educationist, agricultural scientist and education administrator, the Professor Salam in a career spanning more than four decades from 1975 to 2020 across continents has established a great reputation as a tireless academic and scientist beside being recognized as one of the most authoritative voices in area of higher education. He is an academician and scientist with great zeal and enthusiasm. He has published 153 research papers 15 review articles and 13 books in biological sciences. Welcome Professor Dr. M. Abdul Salam on our show. Professor Dr. M. Abdul Salam, you are being a, a very, a, on a very, very high position of as a vice chancellor, as well as being an academician. And you are very much associated with the uh, biological sciences. And you have seen the uh, parenting yourself as well as you are seeing the parenting of the students whom you taught or you, whom you, they were in your university or the colleges or schools. Now, and you have also seen the parenting in different continents. Now, we would like to know your views on parental pressure and education. Professor Dr. M. Abdul Salam, please. Very good morning to Lalji, Ananda Bosji, and also to Miss Karishmaji. At the out outset, let me congratulate Lalji for choosing this timely subject, parental pressure and education. My, I am just looking at this title, parental pressure, in education, I'm looking at it as a parent, as a teacher, as an educational administrator, as a planner, and also as a mentor. Based on my experience in the field of education for more than four decades. If you look at it, this title has three, four associated terms. There is a word parent, there is no word child, but it, there is a hidden term child, parenting, parental pressure, and education. So parental pressure on education, not on any other thing. Now the latest NEP, National Education Policy of the Government of India, which is said to be one of the greatest documents, greatest programs of the present government. The whole document is centering around the total development, integrated development of a student. It's physical development, mental development, emotional development, intellectual development, development from all domains of a personality. I was looking at my earlier age, during my times, 
there was uh, no pressure from my parents. They just sent me to the schools or colleges. I go, I learn, I come back. There was no pressure except in providing me the fees and these things, you know, the other requirements. Now, as time passes, then the, the compound families became nuclear families. Resources were more available. Resources per capita was more. Ambitions were more. Development was more. You know, care per student from parents was much more. My family was, you know, in many numbers, eight, nine, ten, my times, you now single child families. So things are getting different. Now, as this change happens, the pressure also increases. We, you have already defined the parental pressure, its impacts, and certain examples. Parenting, as you know, is some assistance from the parent, mother or father, to the child for its total development till he or she attains adulthood. Now, since we are talking about education, the parental pressure, pressure from the mother and the father over the child is centered around the academic ambitions. I want to underline the word ambitions. They seldom realize the capability of the child in terms of his interests or talents. I remember one example where an examination example showing the talent difference in education. Quoting like this, you are just expecting a monkey to swim and a fish to climb between. Now, these sort of differences of individuals in terms of its intellectual abilities, talents, physical ability, mental, emotional ability, disregarding all these things, the parents nowadays, in the recent time, I am observing very seriously during the last three or even four decades, very seriously, converge all their resources, their time, their money, their energy, their motivation, their encouragement, facilitation, everything, everything, over the child with a specific task, specific objective. Objective may be to make my child a doctor or an engineer or a scientist or something like that and never ever focus on making a good human being. Because of this over pressure on the child, disregarding his abilities, you know what happens, the student will be kept under stress, emotional stress, physical stress, more tension, and off late every year, associated with the examinations, you can see hundreds of suicides of male and female child, premature suicides. And you can see children sitting there with a lot of depression, getting a feeling that I am useless, I am unable to do. And the comparison of parents showing other students you know, all these create a lot of difficulties in terms of their physical development, their mental, mental uh, framework, their emotional framework. Or in other words, you can see many tragedies associated with the intolerable parental pressure. I remember in one of the earlier uh, presentation, I was mentioning about the number of students in India 36.5 crores of school students and 3.5 crores of college students, roughly 40 crores of students out of 140. Today, if you look at in my own state, the state of Kerala, every school is competing to equip the best. Every parent is competing to invest maximum on the student. And the mother and the father, you know, 24 hours, they are after the student with all care, pressure, motivation, competition, et cetera, et cetera. As a result, if you look at the, the nation at large, the number of suicides increases, you now creating you know, criminal sort of behavior, indecent behavior, 
now leading to unexpected undesired results are more rampant than they are leading so the point i am trying to say is compared to the earlier times because of the development maybe or because of the enhancement in resources maybe because of the academic ambitions and again because of creation of more number of or formation of more number of micro families the pressure from the parental side over the children has gone intolerably that is why we are taking up this topic today what are the ill effects of parenting what is a good parenting what is a bad parenting what are the ill effects of bad parenting how can we control this bad parenting these are the things which we are discussing because of these over effects or bad effects of over parent pressure yeah okay thank you very much uh, professor uh, dr m abdul salam for giving your views and uh, what professor salam has mentioned he says that at his time there was no such type of parental pressure uh, he says the reasons were very clear that there was no much uh, uh, resources at that time uh, no development uh, and the joint family so many children are there parents never care and put up the pressure about the studies about the education but they just have to uh, see to it that they will get the food and clothes and the fees and time so that the child can study while he says now Uh, because of the nuclear families the development is taking place more resources are there single child uh, norm has now been adopted man by many families and that has made a competitive era and uh, the parents want that the child their child should be the best and for that they put unnecessary pressure on the child and the same thing is happening with the schools and the colleges they in the competition to be number 1 in their district or the state they are also putting more, more and more pressure on the students so basically what he says is nowadays the education as well as the pressure from the uh, from the family is too much and sometimes he says it is like that that the monkey has to swim and the fish has to climb the tree that much is the expectations from the parents and he says that because of this expectation over expectation the child is going under depression uh, they are uh, thinking to commit suicide they they become criminals and they will uh, they that's why they have the lots of uh, mental and physical problems which were not there earlier so he says there are good parenting and bad parenting it depends but the pressure what the pressure has been put is not advisable at this time and because of that we are discussing today's uh, pro- topic thank you very much professor dr m abdul salam for giving your uh, opening uh, very good uh, remarks about the parental pressure now i would like to invite my next guest and uh, he is uh, uh, pro- he is dr c v anand bose ies Dr CV Anand Bose IAS is one man expert commission on labor to prepare an action plan for the welfare and development of the workforce in the context of covid-19 he is also the principal advisor government of india heritage project he was former head of the disaster management government of india and central draft relief commissioner government of india he was the vice chancellor of national museum university of delhi he has authored 40 books in english Malayalam and Hindi, including novels, short stories, and essays. Four of his books have become bestsellers. Four books on Vastu and architecture, and book one book on housing received prestigious the Sharjah International Book Fair Award. Dr. Bose is an housing expert, innovator, writer, orator, and visionary. The path-breaking institutions set up by him, such as Nimriti Kendra Building Center, District Tourism Council, and Habitat Alliance. have been replicated at the state national and global level he was the head of the prestigious supreme court committee on the treasures of shri padma vaswami temple dr bose addressed united nation general assembly and specialized sessions five times on various international issues 
Dr. Bose is a recipient of 31 national and international awards, including United Nations Global Best Practice Award. He also received prestigious Jawaharlal Nehru Fellowship. Kerala government termed him Lord of Ideas. Former Prime Minister Mr. Manmohan Singh called him inspired civil servant and our Honorable Prime Minister Mr. Modi called him man of ideas. Uh, Prof. Uh, Dr. C. V. Anand Bose is right now in a conference and he has sent his uh, uh, voice recording, which I am playing right now, which uh, uh, although he has promised that he would try like, he will try to join uh, as early as possible, but right now he's in conference. So he has asked me to play his uh, voice recording, so which I am playing, which will be giving his thoughts on the topic. So uh, Dr. C. V. Anand Bose, IES on parental pressure on, and education. Have an obvious preference for the male child as the first offspring of a couple. And the child should not only be male, but should also look like his father. In a song and story, that sentiment may have taken us. But how boringly repetitive the society would be if all the children grow up to become carbon copies of their father or mother. Variety being the spice of life, the purpose of creation is not at all to make clones of people. Seeing the mad rush of new gen parents, one would feel that their desire is not to have children, but to have robots as a progeny. A crop of little monkeys that jump according to their commands. The number of mothers insisting on getting the best of everything for their children is legion. I feel pity for nervous, fidgety mothers waiting impatiently outside examination halls causing tension not only for themselves but also for their children. There is tension in every home having school going children. Maths is tough for my son. English is easy. I am now searching for a good tuition master. My colleague once told me, in which class is your son studying? I asked in full sympathy. First standard pastor replied. I felt like laughing, but did not show it on my face. The tension and anxiety that grip parents have gone viral. Yes, viral. Now, in all schools of India today, this is the position. The parents have decided that their children make <clears throat> horses with their blinkers in place should move only in the direction they decide. This is equal to barring the inevitability of the laws of nature, which way the children will take <coughs> is their responsibility. <coughs> it is their innate wisdom and the specialities of their character that help them determine whether they should take the path of Abraham or Cain or Abel. If an attempt is made to create robots out of them, in total disregard to this, it will naturally lead to tension and personality aberrations of <laughs> Some teachers are also, they also abet uh, such aberrations. To a certain extent, at least some teachers are adamant that the students should follow the path prepared by them. In Germany, an experienced, exasperated teacher once told a student, you are an ignoramus in mathematics. You will never get anywhere in life. We know who this student was. Albert Einstein, who developed the theory of relativity. In England, one student who studied in local grammar schools, in Delhi, in Pochi, had to run away from home. 
The world saw him later as William Shakespeare, the greatest dramatist ever. Winston Churchill was written off by teachers as an imbecile. Abraham Lincoln, Edison, Charlie Chaplin, all are famous names, but none of them had completed education in the expected manner. If they had told the lines or drawn their parents, lines drawn their parents by their parents, if they had told the lines drawn by their parents, they would never have come to the positions they occupied later. None should draw lines for anyone. There are enough rules and don'ts drawn by society and tradition. Freeing emancipation of the hapless children who are forced to waste their lives by raising from one tuition to another and from the mini screen to the computer screen has become the need of the hour. It is essential to sustain and promote creativity among the children. But the children who are to grow up drawing lessons from the society in an atmosphere of give and take are reduced to confine themselves to the cocoons created by their own parents. Society and culture also get enmeshed in the same measure. The inane characteristic of nuclear families is having a bearing on human psyche as well. For the children of the past, the very mention of the word vacation was accelerating time for play and games for the children of relatives' homes. What they lose now is the time to jump into the river, to bathe, to stone down golden fruits from the mango tree, to walk behind the temple oracle as he makes his rounds, to tap along with the drum beats during temple processions to take part in the candlelight march in the church to help to make up the crib scene in celebration of nativity to tell tales and to recite poems see skits and indulge in pranks without being caught and to save the skin when caught i remember seeing a skit in my school days once think it was written by some neighborhood boy during the summer vacation and presented with the help of a teacher. Scene one, a young husband and wife are sitting in the foyer of their home, presently talking to each other. Then they see the mother-in-law coming from afar. To avoid her, they take a domestic call. They fake a domestic call. The husband appears to be in an angry mood and slaps his wife on her way, on the cheek. The wife starts mourning in full-throated ease. Seeing them, this is not the time, good time for the visit. The mother-in-law quietly leaves the place. Scene two, happy that the mother-in-law has gone. The husband says, I can slap you without hurting, do you know that? The victorious wife said, I can wail without getting hurt, do you know that? In comes the mother-in-law. I can remain without going. Do you know that? Isn't it true that such farces and skits give much more creative fun than the ready-made humor of the television programs? When we watch television, keeping only our eyes and ears open, what we really do is to shut down with a bang all doors to creativity. It was not at all a habit in the distant past, especially in the villages. It pressurized the children in the manner of pressure ripening of fruits. Once the children were enrolled in schools, the entire responsibility for their status or studies was vested with the teachers. The teachers considered even a minor lapse from their part as a major shortcoming in the discharge of their duties. The parents did not bother much about their children in school, except giving them an occasional chastisement. Their attitude was not to unduly worry about anything and to take things in the stride. 
playing with old farmer of Malabar. Once a black steed ran into the farm. It is beautiful, sinewy, well groomed. The villagers congratulated the farmer on the good fortune and said, The horse must be worth several thousand rupees. The farmer was indifferent. Well, I do not know, he said ambivalently. After a few days, the horse ran away in the same manner as it had, it had come in. The villagers felt very sorry for the farmer. You would have sold it then itself. If so, you would not have incurred such a great loss, they said. The farmer's refrain was the same. Well, I do not know. A few days later, the horse returned to the farm, bringing with it ten other beautiful steeds. The villagers again congratulated him, saying, it is a good thing that he did not sell the first horse, but the farmer's reply was the same. I do not know. Then the ruler of the land, Zamorin heard about the steeds and became, came forward to buy them at the rate of 100 sovereigns per steed. But the farmer turned down the offer. The villager is called him a fool. His reply was that, well, I don't know. One day, the farmer's son fell down from the horse and fractured his leg. The villagers found fault with the farmer, saying, if he had sold the steeds to the Samarin, this misfortune would not have befallen him. But the farmer was non-committed. Well, I do not know. Not much later, Tipu Sultan, the Mysore tiger, began his ransacking of Malabar. The ruler of the land then conscripted all able-bodied youth to the army. Naturally, the farmer's son was spared because of his fracture. When the villagers congratulated the farmer, exclaiming, How lucky are you? He responded, Well, I do not know. We should realize that inevitability and unexpected developments are part of nature's interminate cycle. It is only natural that there are turns and twists, rise and fall in the growth penetration or pattern or growth pattern of children. Parents should not follow the children like shadows to prevent the inevitable. Nor is it possible to make the children either a shadow. Then why this meaningless shadow play? Fretful mothers. You should realize, you should ponder over this and find an answer themselves. Leave the children alone. Do not accuse, assume that they will go astray if they are outside your kin, your kin, even once. Fretting mothers, you too were children once. Did you go astray then? So he was Dr. There's a voice recording of Dr. Sivian and Bose IES, who is in a conference, but he will definitely uh, promise that he will try to join. So what Dr. Sivian and Bose has mentioned in his uh, uh, recording was very clear. He says that the parents wants that the child should be like them or more than them, which is not possible. After all, everyone is having a different uh, um, way of upbringing and different ways when they will become grown. So, but the pressure of the child, and he has given lots of examples. He has also mentioned how the Einstein or William Shakespeare, the Winston Churchill, and all many people, uh, renowned people were not being given uh, a proper education or they could not complete their schooling or the colleges because of the pressure which they were facing either from the college or from the house, but still they have become so big. So according to uh, Dr. Sivian and Bose, if one has to uh, be uh, in a natural uh, way, then only the growth of the child will be there, but it will put pressure on the child uh, just for studying. That is not good at all for not only for him, but even for the society. Thank you very much, uh, although he's not there, but his views, which he has already expressed, are there. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sivian and Bose. Now I would like to invite my next panelist guest, and she's Miss Karishma Chhatpati. Uh, Miss Karishma is the inner transformation coach. 
She is the founder of Being Spiritual with KUC. She is knowledge partner of Fizza Private Limited, Mumbai. She started out as a journalist, then progressed to an editorial desktop job. And on the side, she completed her master's in psychotherapy and counseling and master's in psychology. For eight years, she doubled, rather tripled up as an editor, freelance writer and corporate coach and psychotherapist. Then in 2008, she switched completely to coaching, psychotherapy and counseling, used a myriad of modalities to help her clients. Her head was filled with knowledge of tarot, angel card reading, Hindu rites and rituals from a spiritual perspective, crystal healing Reiki, guided meditations, mindfulness, hypo Therapy, hypnotherapy, sorry, hypnotherapy, astrology, rune coasting, crystal ball gauging, art therapy, handwriting and signature analysis, candle mediation, etc. Being a spiritual with KUC, she requested community. Her every blog post comes from a space of deeper understanding, wisdom brought out about by the awareness that comes through experience of the lesson learned. Welcome, uh, Miss uh, Karishma Chatrapati, on our show. Miss Karishma Chatrapati, you have heard what Professor Dr. M. Abdul Salam, as well as Dr. C. V. Anand Bose, IES, has mentioned. And both are of these views that unnecessary pressure, the, the parental pressure on the child is not at all healthy for the well being of the child, whether it's mentally or physically or even for the education. And uh, they have expressed that this is because the, one of the reason is because of the development, because of the, uh, the nuclear family and uh, because of the competitive world, which is now we are living. Now, you being a, uh, yourself a psychotherapist as well as psychologist uh, as well as a counselor and you are doing lots of counseling uh, for the parents and you are getting the first hand information what type of pressure the uh, the parental pressure is harming the mental well being of a child so we would like to know from you uh, the parental pressure and education miss karishma chatrapati please thank you so much mr goel and it's such an honor to be on this platform today this is one topic that is closest to my heart because you know, and, and this actually became an impression when I was driving past a beautiful hoarding that said that the child gives birth to the mother. And that's when I reassessed. I said, where are parents really going wrong? The problem with parenting is that when you believe this is my child, you want to own that child. You want to control that child. And in wanting to control, you're not giving them the freedom of development. But this is what parents have been doing. You go back to generations and generations. Parents only became parents out of their own parents. They forgot that they were a child also once. So every time it's about putting their own pressures on the child. Expectations destroy joy. I say this to every parent. If you have an expectation from your child, it's because you have expectations from yourself that have been unfulfilled. Let's reassess your own life and you will see that from your child, you will have no expectations. Faulty parenting just comes from everything that is external. That is why inner transformation coach. Stop looking at everything around. The neighbor's child, this one's child, my friend's child, my cousin's child. Everyone's child is better than your own child. Why? Why can't you look at your own child and recognize your child's strengths? Why can't you work on the strengths so that the weaknesses get diminished? Why are we always pointing fingers and saying, my child is not studying, my child doesn't do this, my child doesn't listen to me, my child is complaining, 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 complaining. And the best thing is that when parents come to me for counseling, they're like, my child needs you. I'm like, before your child needs me, you need me. You have to recognize that. I will counsel your child. But if your child comes back to your environment, then what, what use am I? So helping a child is helping an entire family. A parental, you know, the, it, this is something that's ingrained into parents. We need to control. We have given birth to this child. We are the ones who have to carve the future of the child. But why? 
This is not the age where we have limited resources, limited options. This is the age of following your passion and everything that you do has a payoff today. Everything, there are, there are children who are excelling and there are children who are wilting also under pressure. You sow a seed. Can you every day keep looking at that seed? How is it going to grow? No, you have to give it space. You fill, you put the water, you add the manure, you look at it, you tend to it. Why can't parents get a child as a seedling, as a plant that needs to be nurtured? When parents are recognizing this, that I am the gardener who has got this child, then you start nurturing the child. You stop bringing up the child. You stop controlling the child. It's all about nurturance. Feeding the child the right kind of food physically, mentally, and emotionally. You know, in a very interesting anecdote, uh, and it's very personal, I remember this particular father who went on pressuring the child, saying, you have to study, you have to excel, you have to do this, you have to do that, no playtime, nothing. And one day the child finds a box hidden somewhere and comes running out and says, you know what, dad, you failed in the fifth standard and you keep telling me that I need to do very, very well in my studies. And the father was so shamefaced at that point because what could he tell that child? Then what happened? From being a controlling father who wanted the child to excel, he became the, de the absolute democratic father who said, do what you want. That's also not helpful. You have to be a friend to your child. You have to allow your child to come and share what that child is going through. Don't undermine a child. Development begins from the womb. But we say because the child is crying and in the lab, there is no development happening. The child is developing from your womb. Your sanskaras, whatever you fill it in, is going to reap into something of tomorrow. Recognize that if you're giving birth to a child more than that, the child is giving birth to the parent in you. And therefore, that responsibility is yours to grow your child in this environment of full bloom. What are your passions, beta? You like dancing? Let's put you in a dance class. You like football? Let's train you for football. Academics will happen. Not every child is born to be a first, second and third grader. But every child is born to live their passion, to live their purpose. Let's help our children do that. Today, we've got so many more choices. I say this to every parent who comes to me. First, stop looking at your child as only he or she has faults. I'm imperfect. Can you embrace yourself and say, I have imperfections. My child is as imperfect as I am. And let's stop striving for perfection because it's a myth. Your reality is who you are and everything that you're made up of. This is where parenting goes wrong. The pressure. And whose pressure? Societal pressure? Neighbors pressure? It's everything and your own pressure. Your own failures. You're reflecting on your child. Your own fears of your own failures. What? Is it helping your child? And today that we're going through a pandemic where children are at home 24 by 7, they have not visited school, their, their social development has uh, taken a backseat. As parents, we have to be even more understanding of what the child is going through. We as adults can adjust to the four walls. For that child, freedom, greenery, outdoors is everything. And the pandemic has taken it away. And whisper, you keep putting pressure on the child. And then you say, my child is in front of the screen, but circumstances have given has, has made that happen, right? We are learning through the screen today. So assess your own mental well-being. Be mindful as a parent. This is your responsibility. This is your child. It's all about you. Stop throwing your past onto your child's future. What you were, how you were. And how you were brought up has got nothing to do with how you need to bring up your child. It just has to be with being comfortable with yourself and recognizing your child as that mud on a potter's wheel. And playfully bring up your child. Have fun. Be your child's friend and yet be a parent. Be controlling when you need to and let go when you want to. Stop telling them what not to do. How about showing them what they can do and what they're capable of doing? So many children, while we talk about parental pressure, it's so beautiful. But even during that la the last one year of the pandemic, 
children have also been so important in helping and mobilizing help for various organizations they have done things how much have we sat down and congratulated those children and thanked them have the parents as she said my child has achieved this or have you looked at your child and said it's a waste of time get back to your studies nothing is a waste of time with your parents out there nothing everything contributes to your child's well being today every university has so much more to offer you beyond arts commerce and science universities are micromanaging careers today and giving you opportunities to live your purpose so parents help your child to do that help your child but you can do that when you recognize that they have given birth to you as a parent and not you having given birth to that child you don't have to control them you need to walk along with them okay thank you very much uh, miss uh, karishma chatrapati for giving your a uh, very very uh, i must say the views which today uh, the parents require how they can upbring their child and what she says is you own your child and this feeling of yours is killing the child she says yes the child is yours but it doesn't means that you will over uh, possess the child and you think that this is my child to be the best and your expectations the the worst part is because you always expect much and more from the child she also mentioned that uh, how one child when found one box in the old report card of the father the father was so bullying for the child and they says that see look you are failed in fifth standard and that then the father says okay you do what so what want to do but what she says is your attitude should be friendly you must understand that the child is like your friend and the child is being developed even from the womb and they are are learning everything so it, it's not that uh, if he or she is not good in studies it means they are useless they are doing many things then she says whenever somebody comes to her and asks the counseling for the child she says it is better that i should counsel you and your family because ultimately the child has to go back to your family only and you require counseling not the child so according to her the the child has given the parenthood one should understand it's not you have given the birth to a child yes you have given but the child has also given birth to you as a parent so she says nowadays because of the covid so much pressure is already there on the children but and we must understand that they are not going out they are not meeting their friends but still they are coping up with the online classes so we must not put pressure to them and one more very important point which she says is please don't bring your past how you are uh, your upbringing were whether how it was faulty or not faulty and you want to impose the same things uh, to your child which is wrong let the child will grow naturally in the environment and, and give and have fun with him or her let them do what they want to do if they want to play let them play if they want to help you in the kitchen let them do that but don't put a pressure and according to her everything what a child is doing is contributing for the development of the family or the society thank you very much uh, ms karishma chatrapati i am sure it is very enlightening today's our our media conference uh, the views expressed by former vice chancellor expressed by dr cv anand bose and expressed by you will definitely give a, a new dimensions of the parental uh, pressures which the parents are put on their own child thank you very much now i would like to ask a question to um, um, uh, prof, uh, our professor uh, dr abdul salam professor salam you being an educationist and you are very much well informed with the current development do you think that this new education or the national education policy 2020 will be beneficial for the uh, this uh, for the development of the child and it will ease the parental pressure uh, of what we have seen in the last 3 4 decades uh, professor dr salam please Uh, please unmute please unmute please unmute 
before uh, answering to that particular question uh, let me uh, congratulate uh, madam karishma chatrapati for giving an excellent comparison in terms of you know gardener sort of you know role you know for the parent this parent should be a good gardener as an agricultural scientist i appreciate that term very much a good gardener the child is a small sapling or the seedling and your role is to care them with you know the required amount of nutrients and water and protection not with the overdose of water overdose of nutrients overdose of caring so the parent ability depends on your decision regarding the optimum doses of care that is to be given to the student now one more point before coming to the question proper one more thing i would like to say as a parent you know i remember when i was in uk with my my four year old daughter for my post doc she was in a nursery you know during that one year time you know the teachers team what they were doing they were helping me to identify the talents the strength and the weaknesses of this of my daughter what are her abilities what are her potentials what are her talents in which area she will shine in which area she will not shine you know that you know education to the parents was great for me as a parent to tailor her you know the course of academia so such a mechanism of talent identification talent nurturing talent promotion talent centric academic ambitions that is very much la lacking in our system and i believe that today in the era of online training online teaching etc etc there should be some mechanism for regular training of parents not occasional train regular in the sense maybe once in a week or so 10 minutes training what you should do what you should not do and also talent identification talent nurturing mechanisms talent oriented you know academic ambition not only academic even physical sports game etc ambition fixing mechanisms that will also help in our education process then mm, i believe you know in good parenting besides the role of uh, our uh, uh, you know the teachers or trainers in training the parents is very important uh, at the same time with these two points you know after congratulating madam and after talking about the talent identification talent nurturing i am coming to the question as to whether the nep 2020 the philosophy the principles and philosophy or the specific objectives of the nep 2020 will eliminate this it cannot eliminate the parent pressure it will focus it will definitely teach the teachers the students and the parents or to give them an awareness regarding their talents and talent promotion and ultimately integrated personality development oriented education is envisaged in the nep focusing again back to this this title that is parental pressure in education i must definitely state over here that you know experts like uh, uh, madam karishma there should be an online mechanism from some corner sponsored by somebody focusing on all parents on a regular basis you know how you can identify the talents of your student whether it is sports or games whatever it may be how you, you can promote it what is the importance of non comparing with others what is the importance of identifying the talent promotion areas and mechanism so such things i am sure will definitely eliminate that the undesirable you know issues related to bad parenting and parent pressure over the innocent children okay thank you very much uh, Pro professor dr m abdul salam for giving your views now my question goes to 
Miss Karishma. Miss Karishma, don't you uh, think that uh, today the parents, for their own whims and wishes, and to sh show off that they are the they want they because they want to keep their nose high in the society and they want their name to be high in the society. They put more pressure on the child because those who are in the competitive world, like what uh, Professor Salam has mentioned initially, because of the uh, nuclear family, they found that the child should be uh, number one in every field, which was not the case earlier. And that's why the to satisfy their own whims and wishes, to just show off in the society, they are putting the pressure. Do you agree with this? If yes or, or not, whatsoever your views and how we can, uh, the parents can remove or can, uh, can reduce this, uh, their own uh, um, psych psychological uh, things that they want to be number one. And that's why they put the pressure on the children. Miss Karishma, please. You know, sir, I completely agree with this that today, we are, unfortunately, while we are internalized as a nuclear family, we are living, looking at everything around us. We believe that we are successful. Our status is defined by everything that we own, including our child. So our child has become like, an, a, like a commodity for parents. Mera bacha first. My, my child is coming first. My child is doing this. My child is attending this class, this class, this class. You won't believe this, sir. A first standard child online education finishes online education by starts a uh, class at about eight o'clock in the morning finishes by 1 30 in the afternoon gets a nap for half an hour from 3 30 has tuitions for what has been taught in the morning then goes into a dance class then goes into another class and by the time 7 38 that child doesn't have a smile on her face or his face this is reality across the board rural india far less because uh, the options are far less. This is mainly a problem with urban India because urban India has become competitive, materialistic. Be materialistic. It's not a bad thing. Competition should not be around you. Competition should be with yourself. Ki bacha, last year you got 80%. Na? I know you're capable of 85% this year. Let's push a little bit. No, their view is what? You got only 80%. Did you see what so-and-so got? How much this one has got? How much that one has got? That child's pressure is not an internal pressure then, it is the external pressure. And that pressure is bad. Little bit stress is required in life. For anything to move, a little bit of stress and pressure is required. But not to the extent where that child is looking at himself or herself and feeling that they are incapable and everyone else is better than them. Compete with yourself. Parents have to learn that too. Stop making your child uh, uh, you know, a, a, a trophy. Your child is not a it's not a trophy. Your child is a child. Your child is not your commodity, a prize possession, or somebody you need to show off. Your child is another human being who is going to grow into being a beautiful, dynamic human being, a great citizen of this nation, and contribute to the welfare of this nation. Stop putting pressure and come take your vision from around you and come to internalize yourself. Your status doesn't come from what you own. It comes from who you are. And who you own is not defined by what you are and what you own. I am. That's it. Just be that. No, your child will learn to be that. Okay. Th thank you, Ms. Karishma, for giving your views. And now my question goes to uh, Professor Salam. Professor Salam, when we are talking about that uh, parental pressure, but we should understand especially in India, the admissions for preschool or junior KG or nursery, whatsoever it is, is so competitive today that not only it's a long wait list, but the child has to undergo for a, a oral or viva or exam or, or many other things. Now, the test, how a child of one, one and a half years or two years is able to reply and especially to a stranger because the teacher or the principal whosoever is taking the test is not acquainted with the child and that child's psychology and the pressure. I have seen many of the parents, what they are doing is they are teaching the child from the very beginning, you have to learn this, you have to recite this, you have to tell the, your name, your father's name, 
all those things at the age of one and a half years. You mentioned how your daughter is of four years in the, in the UK. And you have seen other countries also. There is a difference because they, are, they used to just ask the child, they bring the child, let they, the child do or whatsoever activity the child is doing, they just observe. They are not asking the question, which is not in India. There the question has been asked. And many times, uh, which I am sure Ms. Karishma will also vouch after time afterwards, that it all depends on the mood of the child. If child is not in mood, he or she is not going to reply. Even he or she knows what has been taught to, to them at that early age. What do you say about this, Professor Salah? I fully appreciate. Uh, uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes I, fully, I fully appreciate this thought. I tell you, you know, of late, uh, you know, the educationists, the teachers, the parents, they all realize the need for keeping the child cool and comfortable, stress-free, tension-free, totally free. And the educational philosophy itself is getting ch changed. You know, what is happening during education or learning? You know, knowingly or unknowingly, we are opening up all our panjendriya, all our five sensory organs and collecting data. You know, maybe through eyes or ears, all indriyas are, you know, gathering data, processing data, analyzing data and understanding them. This is the process of education, you know, that's number one. As you said, you know, for analyzing and understanding, you need a cool atmosphere, tension-free atmosphere. So what is needed for the part of a teacher or a parent is to create a cool and comfortable environment for him to open up all the indriyas, gather all the data, process in his brain, and draw his own conclusion. Why it is day? Why not night? No, he analyzes himself. He asks questions. That is why we talk about critical thinking, creative creativity, critical thinking, and all that. Today, even NEP 2020, I tell you, NEP 2020 also emphasized the need for creating thinkers and doers. Thinker is a person, you know, most of the successful persons are thinkers in some form or other. So how best we can create thinkers, not the, not the masters? That's the changing scenario of education. Similarly, thinkers and doers, what, is, what do you mean by doing? You know, you do and learn. In that process, you develop skill. So create thinkers, hears, create doers. In that process, you just, you know, inflict skills of every sort of work to which he has a skill, you know, or a talent. Say, for example, a football person showing talent for football, you know, give him adequate opportunity right from young age to play and grow. Now, that is why, you know, the work integrated learning is coming into place, work integrated learning and living. Now, what is happening there? He thinks by himself, he gathers data, he analyzes data, he does it, he gain it, he absorb it, it is going into the system. Such boys and girls, they are not mug masters. They are going to be good, not only for them, to their parents and to the society at large. Okay. Thank you, uh, Professor Salam. Now my question goes to Ms. Karishma. Ms. Karishma, the question, almost the same what I asked uh, uh, Professor Salam, that because of this faulty admission process, don't you think, it is not the uh, parents' fault, but the fault lies with our uh, education system in India that the first class or the first st starting point of a child is so difficult that the parents are bound to come in the pressure, to put the pressure on the child from the very beginning. And that's why the uh, faulty uh, parenting starts. Do you agree? If yes, then what do you think should be the solution which you want to suggest so that at least the pressure which a child is facing even when she or he is only one, one and a half years old. What do you say about this, Ms. Karishma? You know, sir, I, um, I, I do agree that there is a faulty system for bringing a child to school and interviewing the child 
putting so much of pressure. But at the same time, I do take great pride in the fact that we belong to a democracy. Democracy means that over here, citizens can come together and charter change in any system. I think it's a time that parents need to come together and say that what is happening where the system of bringing in the child into school is faulty. We need to clear the system. What would help? We need to be the change. The problem is that we know there's a fault and then we have the attitude of sab chalta hai, let it be. And we expect everyone else to do it for us. So one, I think parents must be more conscious to want to inculcate. I mean, schools have parent-teacher associations. Parents will talk about changes where socializing is concerned or this teacher is good, this teacher is bad. They have a say in that. Why can't they actually create movements where then schools are compelled to bring a change? It's simple. We, are, we have to be part of that change-making policy. Another aspect, sir, that, we, that you had brought up was about moods and children. I have to share with you something very interesting. A newborn baby has only two moods or two emotions. Laughter or tears. Laughter is because there's joyfulness around and tears because he or she feels that the need for something. There is no other fear. Every, I and mean, no other emotion. Every emotion is brought about by conditioning and imitation. You look at your parent getting scared of something, you learn fear. You see your parent angry and in a bad mood, you learn that. Moods are taught by our own parents. We learn it from imitation and mimicry. And yes, the system needs to change. It is very unfair. My heart goes out to the children who are under so much of pressure to perform. Performance anxiety, such a, you know, the, the, the phrase performance anxiety, why? The child should be free and should be able to say, my name is Karishma. And that's it. That is enough to tell you that the child belongs to your school. Like two and a half, what are you measuring? And why are you measuring? Freedom is important. And you should be pointing out as a principal or as a teacher that my God, this child is not free. That means that we need to reassess and look at how we can help this parent to free the child. We have to take more responsibility. It, it works in every way. The education system, the parental bodies have to work together. It has to be a joint effort. So it's not fair to only say one part of the uh, one part of the engine is 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 incompetent. It's the entire system we need to change. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Karishma. Now my question goes to Professor Salam. Professor Salam, as you have heard what Ms. Karishma says, we require to change the system because definitely the NEP or National Education Policy 2020 is a welcome change as far as the higher education or even, even the education uh, from primary schools. But the admission process but the, and the pressure the pressure is so much. You, um, uh, Professor Slam, you have visited so many co countries and the continents. You have seen there how in Western countries, a child of 11, 12 or 13 years start working somewhere and become a self-dependent and that self-esteem, which he or she is inculcated at that age, is definitely uh, a, a something which is not there in India. Here, the child or the youth up to the age of 25, 27 sometimes is studying on and totally depending on the parents. And that's why the parents have a duty to see that the child should grow in a proper way. While in other countries, child's freedom starts from 11 or 12 years. And then, then the child is doing whatsoever they want to do. They are learning, they are seeing the things, what is happening across in the in the environment, in the nature, while in our country, it's not that. So don't you think we require not only the change in the education system, but change in the societal behavior. We should allow our child to work, to see that what we are now turning as an experiential education, basically until unless the child will not go in the, in the open environment, apart from the school and college, and see what is happening in the society, they cannot learn more. And then only the, uh, the parental pressure can be reduced. What you say about this, Professor Salah? Yeah, before I answer this question, let me add to the earlier point. You were talking about admission tests at the KG level and all out to control. As a, 
educationist and education administrator, I strongly believe now to eliminate such undesirable practices, a strong relieved government can easily raise it out. You know, if you can come out with the strong rules and regulations that if somebody is violating such things, their license will be, will, be, <laughs> will all will be, you know, canceled. Such, you know, there should be different types of mechanisms, you know, advising them, just, you know, keeping, the, taking them to our hands and motivating them. And finally, our people will yield to such things only with the strong rules and its implementation. I'm sure such primary level cues and admission tests can easily go if the government wishes. That's about that. Now, coming to the admission mechanism, I tell you, Mafra, based on my experience for more than four decades uh, in the higher education system, as well as, you know, vocational in the school system, I believe that the current type of admissions for any course, any level, any, any, any subject, looking at the grades or the credits that should be modified. I don't want to say should go. It should be modified. Nowadays, you know, all A-grade fellows will be admitted. Do you think that all these A-grade fellows are coming out, you know, doing good to the society ultimately? If that is so, all our doctors, you know, they will be good doctors. They're all A-grade top rank fellows, all engineers, RIAs, all the so-called A-grade fellows, top A-grade fellows, very often selfish centric fellows, very often never available to the mother nation, very often never available to the parents. No, no the current strategy of admission at any level, looking at the A grades or the ranks, that should be modified. That should be, I may even say that, you know, aptitude, passion, talents, and skills and proven abilities for a particular work area, maybe doctor or an engineer or a, uh, accounting or administration, such fellows should be admitted disregarding his marks at lower levels. You know why I am telling you, sometimes you may be bad at the school level, but you are good at higher level. Sometimes you are bad at, at the college level, but when you go to the doctorate level, you prove yourself to be the best researchers. Now, what I am trying to say is not the erroneously recorded grades and marks. Instead of that, we should have another mechanism to admit students for any course or any subject or any level, looking at his abilities, his talents, his passion, his commitment, to that particular subject. And he should prove himself that he is surviving in that field or he is doing in that job as a doctor, as an engineer, as an administrator. He should not be deprived of that opportunity just because of the simple reason that he scored less at the school level or at the college initial level. That's my feeling after having gone through the educational scenario over decades. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Salam, for giving your views. Very, very strong views. And I'm sure the state governments, at least, because it comes under the state government domain, that they can remove this uh, admission uh, label test, which is been conducted by at least all the private schools, even sometimes even the government schools, they should remove it so that at least uh, just for the want of their own school's image, they are doing this, it should be removed. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Islam. Now, my, uh, uh, I goes to uh, Ms. Karishma. Ms. Karishma, now we have heard, uh, we have heard you, we have heard uh, Professor Salam, we have heard Dr. C. V. Anand Bose. But what advice you would like to give to the parents that they should do, how they can behave? Because the problem is there is no uh, proper guidelines no proper counseling, no proper, uh, uh, you can say, uh, direction for the parents 
to know what type of parenting they should do because they all are busy as you all mentioned about that nuclear family they are busy work from home or working and at, at that time when they are coming back and um, i mean i will add that not only the mood of the child but the mood swing of the parent is also very important if if the mother or the father is in a bad mood for any reason for the work pressure or what not reason they just want to vent out their frustration on the child so what suggestion would you like to give to the parents so that they can become a good parent and they will not put the unnecessary pressure on the child uh, miss karishma please so before i ask that question i would like to mention over here that i myself in school i was a below average child i used to stand top 5 from behind literally and i think where i am today and i'm on this amazing platform does it really matter what my grades were i don't think so so parents your child does not have to have grades to excel in life your child has to simply excel in life give them the opportunity now coming back to your question sir i think most importantly is that parents have to uh be okay with the fact that they need help and accept that they need intervention because things are out of control when does bad parenting happen i i don't like to define bad and good parenting but for the sake of this conversation when does bad parenting happen when the parent is going through immense pressure there is past baggage there is guilt of not living up to expectations there are uh, there are too many pressures financial societal every kind of pressure you are not managing your own life and then what happens your child becomes a reflection of your own failures and therefore you become a bad parent to the child so step number 1 going for counseling and seeking help it's not a sign of weakness it is strength and power to say i need help please help me help me pick, bring, bring up my child so please go out there and seek help recognize that as a parent by being buried under pressure you're not helping your child to develop at all you're only adding more see if i keep saying you're bad you're bad you're bad you're bad you're bad that child will only prove that that child is bad but if i can reverse and say you're an excellent child you're superb oh my god you're so creative that child feels honored enough to perform in that way but you can do that when you're traveling lightly you drop your own baggage your mental emotional baggage and that is why we are in this field going to a counselor does not mean ki mai pagal hu no it means that i acknowledge that i need help and i'm seeking your help to help me do that that is the most important step to take you take that step everything else is sorted out you know when you when, when you read my profile yes i've learned a lot of modalities because sadly up till today in india people will not go to counselors but they'll go to everybody else they'll go to an astrologer they'll go to hypnotherapist because they still hesitate to go to a counselor no please go to a coach and counselor i learned all this so that i can invite you to come and take counseling because these are not divinations the modality for counseling so please be powerful enough to recognize that and say i need your help i need help okay okay <laughs> thank you very much thank you very much and today viewers you have seen how the experts have given very very clear thing that please don't do put the pressure on your child and child and very nicely they said the child has uh, uh, bought you made, made you the parents you don't think that you have you are owning the child and what professor salam said that very very clearly the child should be given the uh, the freedom because we should not try to having a one man up ship and we are just putting pressure because of the uh, to show off our own uh, whims and uh, wishes and because of our nuclear family because of the development all these things one should not try to put bully the child by putting pressure yes we should not leave them we should observe their activities if they are going wrong we must correct them but that, that to correct them also there should be a proper way not just to put pressure or uh, make them guilty that if you can't see what the others are doing you are not doing so that type of uh, parenting should not be there and i am sure that today's 
uh, our program is quite enlightening. Now it depends on the, our own, ourselves, civil society. After all, the child, again, we will say, belongs to us and we belongs to child. We have both the things and you treat them as your friend and then only uh, your child can show something, whether good or bad, but in a very big way. And that is what we require, that a child should develop either in a sports or, uh, or, or the studies or whichever activity they can go, they should go. Only thing is you have to control if they are going on a wrong direction. That is the only correction you require. Otherwise, as Professor Salam also said, that provide the uh, fees, provide them the food and the clothing and good moral values, which is very much required. Thank you very much. And today's program has been live telecasted by V4 News, Global TV, V4 Stream, uh, Malnadu TV India, News Gaunce, Sambas Saroka News, Bharat Post News, as well as was shown live on Facebook and YouTube. And our end were in our evening program of Kalaj or Kalal Welke Sang to bring one personality who is a role model in their own lifetime. And today my chief guest is Mr. Pavan Kumar Mishra. He's a renowned author, trans personal uh, coach, mentor, practicing Vedic astrologer and Vastu consultant. He's joining me. He's uh, from Rishikesh and Noida. He stays both the places uh, of ashram at Rishikesh and he stays in Noida. So please tune in uh, for Kalaj or Kalal Velkesan at 4.30 p.m. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Dr. M. Abdul Salam. Thank you very much, Ms. Karishma Chatpati. And thank you very much, Dr. Sivyanan Bose. Although we missed you, but you have sent kind enough to send us our your uh, voice recording. And thank you all the viewers for watching our show. And I am hopeful that out of today's outcome of our media conference, even if you will change a bit, the child will be 